Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is all about Neptunalia, the ancient festival celebrating Neptune, the god of the sea. So this festival is celebrated every year on July 23rd, and it happens around the new moon in Leo every year, but this year, in 2017, it will actually be exact on July 23rd. Both Neptunalia and the new moon in Leo will be on the same day, July 23rd. Neptune is the Roman god of the sea, earthquakes, soil, storms, and horses. The legends say that he actually gave the first horses to man, so in a lot of fountains or statues of Neptune he's seen with horses. Sometimes they have fish tails or even like dragon wings, it's pretty cool. He is adopted from the Greek god Poseidon who ruled the seas and his wife was Amphorite and the Roman equivalent is the goddess of salt water, Salacia. And Triton, a mythological figure we see often who has an upper body of a male and a lower body of a fish, is the son of Amphorite and Neptune. Now, of course, this ancient Roman festival was celebrated more in areas where it was drier. This time of the summer is super hot. Everyone just wants to relax. So it was a time where they could go out into the fields and build shelters made of tree branches and just drink wine, drink water, and give thanks to Neptune for all of the vegetation and water that he gives. It wasn't just salt water that was associated with Neptune, but fresh water as well. So this time was when the water was at its lowest, so it was perfect for fixing the aqueducts or any type of water system that would be bringing water from the country into the Roman city. So the first part of this festival actually happened on the 18th, and it's called Lucaria, and this is when the Romans would go out and trim the bushes or do any weeding that had to be done, basically just cleaning up the area for the festivities on July 23rd, either conserve the water that was still in the aqueducts or they would drain it. And then two days later, on the 25th, they would drill into the ground to get any new water that had to be done. And this day was called Furinalia because the goddess of wells and springs in ancient Roman times was named Farina. So it's like a week of just recreation out in the country and this is actually associated with the Jewish Feast of the Tabernacle, but it also corresponds to that time of year when people would be out in the field harvesting food or fixing the water systems. So it was a very fun time of leisure out there, drinking wine and water, like I said, and if you were very rich, then you could afford to sacrifice a bull, and a bull was a very special animal to sacrifice. You could only sacrifice a bull to Apollo, Mars, or Neptune in ancient Roman times. So if you see a bull in imagery with Neptune or even with Neptune and his wife Amphorite, like in this picture here, that's because they would sacrifice bulls. So the midpoint between Litha or the summer solstice and Mabon or the autumn equinox is Neptunalia, this day that we're talking about on the 23rd of July. Soon fall will be here and winter, so this is a time to get everything in all your ducks in order and make sure all the pipes are working well so that we can just relax and make sure the rest of the summer is full of enjoyment. Aquamarine is a great crystal that's associated with the water element and Neptune, so you could connect with a crystal like aquamarine or your favorite seashell Imagine its vibration surrounding you in a bubble of the same frequency. Visit the ocean in person or through astral projection. Connect with Mer spirits and ask for clarity on your destiny and subconscious callings. Definitely do something creative because Neptune rules the arts and illusions and delusions. So definitely get out those watercolors or those markers, anything that gets your creative juices going. Here's a painting I did a few years ago of a merman. I arranged my crystals around it and, and imagined myself absorbing the energy of the crystals. You can do this with a doll or poppet, sort of like a voodoo doll sort of thing, um, or even just in your mind, sort of in the astral realm. And I find it really works well, a way for you to just absorb energies while you're still doing other stuff. Speaking of absorbing energies, a lot of people don't know this, but seashells actually have a lot of magical properties, just like crystals. They're kind of like the crystals of the sea. So I have a lot of seashells here, 
and I love to go into some of the magical properties of them with you. Abalone, um, inside of abalone is the mother of pearl. You see the very beautiful shimmery um, knacker is the word of the interior. They're also known as sea opals or sea ears and some powers they're associated with are the healing of emotions, imagination, introspection, intuition, life, maternity, avoiding problems, prosperity, purification, self-work, and stimulation. Next is the angel wing, and the angel wing's powers are balance, angelic energy, grace, hope, angelic magic, and support. The clam. The clam's powers are abundance, love, secrets, sexuality, stability, sympathy, and well-being. Next is the cockle, also known as heart clams. Awareness, calm, burial customs, encouragement, goodness, happiness, rebirth, romance, and self-trust. I'm not sure if these are heart clams, but they look very similar. Next is the conch. Everyone knows the conch. Its powers are banishing, battle, clarity, creativity, danger, energy, intellectual growth, harmony, longevity, negativity, inner peace, power, pregnancy and childbirth, protection, spirits, strength, stress, warmth, and storms. Next is the cowrie, associated with divination, faith, overcoming fear, improvement, independence, manifestation, marriage, money, prophecy, sensitivity, success, vision, and wealth. The jingle, also known as mermaid's toenails, are associated with courage, forgiveness, freedom, light, motivation, and opportunities. Some call this a shark's eye, but its more common name is a moon snail, and it's associated with beauty, cycles, insight, seeking knowledge, moon magic, and protection by the goddess. Next is the murex, also known as purple dye murex, or rock shells. They're associated with adaptability, anger, business, dedication and devotion, justice and legal matters, life, and royalty. Because these shells were used to create Tyrian purple, a very reddish purple sort of color that was worn by Roman emperors. It took a lot of shells to create a bit of this color and that's why it was so expensive and special. And obviously purple dyes are nearly impossible to find in the natural world. You may not know this about oysters, but they're associated with abundance, fertility, vitality, unconditional love, luck, lust, and attracting prosperity. Pearls are associated with activation, awakening, blessings, charity, consecration, desire, favors, gentleness, honor, illumination, innocence, magic, stimulation, and ending patterns of negativity. Next is the periwinkle. Its powers are concentration, deliberation of the mind, determination, friendship, grounding, and integrity. Sand dollars are associated with awareness, compassion, financial, and emotional protection, messages and omens, and your purpose. Now I was really excited to find some of these at the dollar store actually. I've never found some that are completely intact, and the dollar store of all places had some. Scallops are associated with the home, leadership, obstacles, relaxation, spirituality, and travel. Slipper shells, also known as fairy boats, fairy shoes, or quarter deck shells, are associated with challenges, community, family, generosity, support, and transformation. A triton, also known as a triton's trumpet or trumpet snail, is associated with confidence, communication, relationships, and youth. Last but not least, we have the whelk, and its powers are change, inspiration, release, and wisdom. I'm not sure what this shell's name is, but I found it in Malibu, and I've used it to hold crystals for a couple of years, and I just love the really dark indigo bluish color. And these guys remind me of the Murex shells, but I doubt that they are actually Murex, but they have a similar shape. And these were at the dollar store too, completely intact and very spiky. You could also use any Neptune oil that you might have laying around. I got this one from Pan Pipes, a great 
magical supply store in Hollywood. You could get any mermaid figures that you have in your house and just display them and enjoy their fishiness. You could pick your favorite blue crystal. I like topaz or apatite is a very nice dark blue stone. All right guys, I hope you enjoy this video. Get out your blue candles and any type of bubbles or water fun that you might have. This is a time to just relax and get wet, enjoy the summer, connect with some mermaids if you can. Maybe you'll spot one out in the water, you never know. I'm always looking. The new moon in Leo is always happening around this time and it actually happens on July 23rd, the day of Neptunalia, so make sure you check out that video as well. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Nick Folk TV and I'll catch you all later. Bye!